Hey church, I hope you're doing well. So my, my normal pattern here at the start of the video is to, you know, say that introduction and then follow that up by diving into the message. Maybe most of the time by like asking a question and then, you know, giving some illustration and then we get to the scripture on and on and on. Today, I, I'm mixing things up a little bit because I, I want to talk to you right here, right at the beginning and, and not at the end about something that's coming up and that is Lent. I know that you probably know this, but we're getting close to Easter, especially close to that Lenten season. And I'm personally looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to what God might do in this time at this year. And I'm looking forward to the, the things that we might share together. You see, for Lent, I'm planning on each Sunday of Lent, each time I put out one of these messages, for it to be about prayer. And I'm hoping that my prayer life will be uh, broadened and deepened because of it. And I'm also hoping that yours will be as well. In addition, I'm hoping that we can spend some time praying together. And so I put together just this, this little resource. It's a little prayer calendar for the season of Lent. And then there's some prayer suggestions on the calendar and within the resource, some things that we might pray about over the course of a week, some things that we might pray about on different days. And I want to offer that to you. I want to extend an invitation that you would pray with me, that we would pray together. There's this verse in James that says uh, the, the prayers of a righteous person, that they do a lot of things, that they availeth much, if you are familiar with the King James Version. But that's just talking about one person. And in my mind, if, if one person's prayers are, are powerful and effective, imagine when two or three or more are praying together along the same line. And so that's the invitation I want to extend to you right here at the beginning before you fall asleep later or you switch off the message to do your next thing. I want to offer you to, to send this prayer thing that we would pray together through Lent and that we would join together in a season of prayer. So here's the question. How do you get that? Well, this is easy. Okay, and I'm not talking three payments of $19.99 kind of easy or I will meet, email you for the rest of your life kind of easy. Uh, all I'm asking is if you would like to receive this and you're not on my mailing list already, just shoot me an email at pastorchrismorris at yahoo.com. Send me an email there and then I will email you this and I won't email you anything else unless you ask me to. Pastor Chris Morris, all one word, at yahoo.com. And if you happen to watch to the end of the video, it's my email address is right there as well. But if you email me, I'll send you out a, a copy of that and you and I can pray together. And we can pray with, uh, you know, I'm, I'm extending this invitation to the churches that I serve. There's some other uh, pastors that have, have joined in and have uh, said that they'll do this with their church. And so it's an exciting opportunity for us. I hope you would, would join me. All right. Now that we've gotten that uh, here and, and before us, let's, let's move on to today's uh, kind of topic. And, and let me ask you a question. See, back to the pattern. Let me ask you a question. Are you a bed lingerer? Do, do you like to remain in bed for a while after you wake up? Say you wake up in the morning. Is it your preference like if somebody would bring you breakfast in bed? And then they maybe follow that up with the daily newspaper. And then maybe after that, you might watch some TV shows. And, and if you could, you would spend the whole day in bed. Is that something that's appealing to you? Do you, do you like that idea? Do you, do you like to linger after you're awakened before you, you get up and, and do things? I mean, you might even like to linger all day long and then go back to bed and do the same thing the next day. Is that something that you like? You know, I've, I've thought about that. I've thought about that idea uh, about lounging around for a while and maybe somebody bringing me breakfast and, and reading the newspaper and all of that. And, and you know what I think about it? I think it's terrible. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't like that idea 
at all. That's not my preference or my cup of tea in the least bit. There ain't no breakfast in bed for me. No thank you. If I'm to eat breakfast in the morning, I'm going to do it, you know, at a table or, or somewhere else, not in my bed where I get all those crumbs. I, ideally, you know, it's at, at a table or at a donut shop or something like that. But my bed, no thank you. I don't want those crumbs in my sleep zone. The same thing with a newspaper. Now, I'm a young enough whippersnapper that I don't really read the newspaper, and I'm sorry if that offends you. I, I get my news digitally for the most part, and I know I miss things, but that's how I do it. But if I were to read a newspaper, I wouldn't want to do that in bed either. I don't want that newsprint all over my sleep zone. Uh, newspapers get read in, like, my reading chair. That's a better place for that. And even TV shows. I don't want to watch them in, in laying around in bed all day. I would rather go sit in a recliner. That's a preference of mine. Ain't no breakfast in bed for me. Now, some of you might think, but Pastor Chris, I've heard you say how you have a hard time waking up and how you have a hard time getting going. And, and you're right. And others of you might say, Chris, I, I know you've talked about taking naps and you like to take naps in the afternoon. And I'd say, you're right. I, I do like to get sleep and I have a hard time being awakened. But once I'm awake, I, I want to get out of there. It, it's time to go and do things. I don't want to just lounge around. I, there's a call for action and I want to get moving. On with the day. Breakfast, prayer time, devotional, exercise, whatever it is, uh, the work that's before me. Once I'm awake, I get on up and get to getting. That's my preference. Now, I might risk here sounding a little bit like I'm putting my personal preference onto you, but I'm willing to take that gamble for today. And, I, and I'm going to say that by and large, as a rule, ain't no breakfast in bed, in bed for you either, or at least there shouldn't be. I, I mean, we, we think about the model that God has given us, and, and there's some uh, leeway and actually a commandment that we keep a day of rest, a, a day of holiness, a, a Sabbath, and, and God says that that's in there. But, but if we look at the broader scope of things, there, God worked for six days and one day of rest, and that's kind of the, the pattern that he gives, the example that he sets, the thing that God wants for us to do. We're, we're called to work, and then we also are called to rest. Or we're, or we're called to rest, but then we're also called to work. Whichever way you want to order that, there's a, a work time and a rest time. And so by and large, ain't no breakfast in bed for you, at least not every day. It's not six days of laying around doing nothing in one day of work. It's, it's kind of the opposite of that. And we can see this play out in our day-to-day -day lives. If we were called to hold down a, a particular job or if we're called to, to do a, a particular thing or live a particular way, we know that that job and that thing and that way that we're called to live isn't going to get done if we just stay in bed all day long. It's not going to get done if we don't actually get up when we wake up. There is a call to action. And the same is true, I believe, of our Christian life, of our life in Christ, of our uh, spiritual journey as well. There's a call to get up and get to getting after we're awakened, after we wake up. We need to get up after we wake up. And we've been in this series for the last few weeks, and this will actually wrap it up. Oh, this will be the final week of our Awakened series, and then we'll have a little pause where I take a day of rest and, and take a, a little vacation day next week, and then we're into the Lenten series. But as we've been in this Awakened series, we, we've looked at a few things, how we need to be awakened spiritually, how the day of our salvation is closer now than it will be, than it was in the past. Oh, sorry, got that a little off. But the day of sal our salvation is closer right now than it was when we first believed. And then the next week we looked at Bartimaeus and our need, need to have our eyes opened and for us to seek the light, how that is part of our awakening. And then today 
we, we need to recognize how after we wake up, after we are awakened, we actually need to get up and to do the things that God has called for us to do. There's a call to action. Our passage of scripture today is one that's honestly a little bit tough. I mean, this is a passage that, that honestly is a little bit hard to hear these teachings uh, of Jesus. And I'm not going to beat around the bush about that. This is a rougher section of scripture, but we'll spend some time talking about it. We'll s spend some time seeking God about it. And hopefully we'll feel the Lord speaking to us uh, through his word. This comes from the Gospel of Luke. We're in chapter 9. We'll start in verse 57. Hear what it says. As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Immediately, for me, that Sister Act movie, you saw that one a while ago? I will follow him. Follow him wherever. That, uh, anyway, that's not super important. But a man says, I, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus replies, foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Y you want to follow me, but there's no comfy pillow. There's, there's no guarantee of a nice den or a nice hole even to rest. This isn't a trip to the Holiday Inn or the Marriott. The Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, so Jesus calls out to another man, follow me. The man replied, Lord, first let me go and, and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Two men, two different things they were told about, two different things they were, were that were mentioned in terms of what it might cost them to follow after Christ. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. So Jesus, to these three different men, says there, there's no comfy pillow. He, he says, let, let the dead bury their own dead. And no one who puts their hand to the plow and looks back has a place in the kingdom of God that, that you can't go and, and say goodbye to your family even. And I read this passage and I go, Whoo Jesus, I mean, that's, that's tough. Uh, are you sure that's what you meant, Lord? I mean, that, that's some rough, rough things that you're telling me. And that, that's some rough things that you're telling these guys, that there's no place to lay your head, that, that we can't go and bury the dead, that, that we are not allowed to look back and, and say goodbye to our family. Really? You sure, Jesus? Is this really and truly the thing that you want to tell people that it will cost them to, to follow you? And so I, I read that scripture, and that's my, my first response. And then I think, okay, okay, let, let's do some, some pastor stuff to this thing. Let's, let's look, at, look at the larger context. Let's look at the larger context of what it says here in this gospel and, and see what Jesus might be saying, if there's some more things we might learn from this passage and why Jesus is speaking this way. And then I think, okay, let's, let's look at the, the context of the Bible as a whole. And what's the message or the messages that, that God's trying to relay uh, through the Bible at large? And, and then I think, okay, okay, let's look at, at the character and the nature of Jesus and who it is it that Jesus says that he is and, and how is that person that we know in Christ, this, this son of God, this son of man, fully God, fully man, how is he speaking through these words and what might that how might that apply to my life? And so I think all of these things, and then I read through the passage again, and I hear these words. As they were walking along a road, a man said to him, I will go wherever, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus replied, foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, follow me. But the man replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. 
Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. And so in light of all of that stuff, I read this scripture again, and my second response to it is, whew, Jesus, that's rough. I mean, that, that's difficult stuff that you're saying there. Are you sure? Are you sure? And I think that's part of the point. Maybe not the entire point, but I think that's part of the point of Jesus' teaching here. Is that he wants for us to be shocked by what we're asked to do as disciples. By what we're called to do to follow Jesus. By the cost that it is to us to give our lives to Christ. Jesus wants first priority. With, with nothing in between us and him. Total commitment, full surrender, complete hearts, all in, willing to go wherever the Lord might go. And so if Jesus says, if it's between me and your comfort, if you want to follow me, you better, you need to choose me. If that means that you put your head on a rock a couple of nights or, or maybe sleep on the floor or, or whatever it is that it costs you in terms of your physical comfort, you got to choose. Will you choose the comfort or, or will you choose following me with everything you have? And then he, he goes on and he says, you know, if it costs you missing out on you know, a funeral, maybe even an inheritance, depending on how far into there you want to dig. If it costs some of those things that, that you're tied to in your life, even things that you're tied to in your life with your family, which one will it be? Will you choose your family above God if it came down to that? When the, if the rubber hit, hit the road, proper met the road right there in that moment, would you put another relationship above mine and yours and Jesus says if you want to be my disciple you can't do that you need to follow me with everything you have and, and then Jesus pushes even even further what if you can't say goodbye adequately to people what if following me costs you relationships with your friends with your family, with people that you're close to. Which, which one's more important? Following after me or choosing someone else? Serving me or serving someone else? And Jesus makes it clear through these things that he wants complete surrender, total commitment. He wants our hearts in our lives and he wants us to be willing to follow him no matter where he, he goes no matter, matter what he asks no matter what that might cost there's this other uh, passage that that is in the gospel of matthew and this is another one that that's a little shocking and difficult at least it is for me it comes from matthew 16 verses 24 and 25 then jesus said to his disciples if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. Daily surrender. Taking up your, your own cross and following after Christ, no matter what the cost is to you as a person. Complete devotion is what Jesus is asking for and that's what he's asking for from us when we are awakened by his love and in his spirit putting feet to dirt or feet to pavement or whatever it is and following after christ no matter the cost you know it's interesting here uh, this passage has Jesus meeting some guys as he's walking along a road and and that's kind of similar to what we read about last week 
Jesus met Bartimaeus on the on the road from from Jericho to Jerusalem and and we came across Bartimaeus then and this is where Jesus meets these three folks on another road it's not exactly the road to Jerusalem and we're not 100% sure on on where Jesus was headed at least I'm not right in this moment but it's not that final walk to the cross like it was when Jesus met Bartimaeus but if we know the life of Christ all of it leads to the cross. And that's the same for us as well. If we're going to follow after Jesus, we're, we need to be willing to die to ourselves and to live for Christ. Our, our journey heads to the cross, and that's part of our discipleship. That's part of following. That's part of being woken up into the Spirit of God, that we would embrace the love of Jesus and even go to the cross with him. It's a serious commitment. But we know, too, that the cross isn't the period. The cross isn't the end point. The cross isn't where Jesus stopped. But for the joy that stood beyond it, the, the joy that stood before him, Jesus endured the cross, and he asked for us to do the same promising us things that are far beyond those things that we're asked to give up. And so when we're asked to give up comfort, Jesus says, yeah, he gave up a pillow. He gave up a com comforter and maybe a nice little cuddly blankie. But I'll give you the comforter, the Holy Spirit. Another name for the, the Spirit of God is the comforter. The one who will comfort you as you follow after me. So you might not get every night on a nice cushy bed, but you'll have the comforter to travel with you. And you maybe will miss out on, on a funeral. You maybe will miss out on, on one of those celebrations of life or a ceremony of death or however that looks. You might miss out there, but I'm offering you life, life everlasting. That whoever believes in me will have life and will not die. Life beyond the cross and beyond the sacrifice. And then say we miss out on some relationships because of our relationship with God. Say some of our former uh, relationships are severed and are broken. God promises to be closer than, than a brother. And he also puts us into relationships with others in, in the body of Christ. There's life after the sacrifice. There's promise and joy and peace and all of these things that Jesus has, has for us. We just have to be willing to, to take up the cross and to follow him and not let any of those things stand in the way before we do. You know, there's one more point one more little thing I want us to notice, and that's that, that thing he says at the end. No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. See, a, a plow at that time is different than the picture we have from the movies with the, the metal thing and the horse pulling it and two hands on it and going. Uh, they say that the, the plow Jesus is referring to was a single-handed thing, and it was pulled along by the oxen, but you had to kind of push your weight down into it to dig into the ground to, to make the spot for the seeds. And then in your other hand, you had this giant pole that you would use to steer the, the ox with. And so if you looked back, as you had the hand on the plow and the stick, you were shoving that stick who knows where, and the plow wasn't digging in, and the ox was traveling over to the turnip bed that you didn't want it to go to, or wherever it, it so desired. Jesus said, you, you can't do that. You can't look back to what you might be giving up. The only way is to look forward and to do that work which I've called you to do. To, to get to get in and to make disciples and to go and share my love and to follow me and to do those things that you see me do. That is the, the thing that we need. Our call to wake up is also a call to get up and to follow after Christ and to do the work that lays before us. So friend, I, I'm going to 
say it again, that there ain't no breakfast in bed. At least not every day. I mean, yes, you'll find rest and you'll find joy and you'll find peace and you'll find all this comfort that you never knew was possible. But you'll also be asked to put your hand to the plow, to steer your ox, to fix your eyes on Christ, and to let nothing else separate you between you and following after Jesus. My hope is that we might do that together and that we might uh, carry the cross for the joy that's before us, the joy and the life and the love that we found in Jesus. Would you pray? Would you seek God? And would you say, Lord, even if I can't do this on my own, I know that you can work within my heart to help me follow you. It's the most important thing that we'll choose to do today and on into the future. For God's sake, for God's glory, through the power of his Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus, and by the power of his Spirit. Amen.